And this is the Sheridan Douglas tarot. And funny story, I keep asking, uh, I, I've asked a couple of friends of mine if they have read the tarot book by Alfred Douglas, and they immediately are asking me if this is Lord Alfred Douglas, the known lover of Oscar Wilde. And I'm like, no, 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 no. This guy's from the 1970s, not the 18 whatever. Um, but it's funny that they have the, the same name. Um, and after, actually, Alfred Douglas was gay. Sheridan and Douglas were a couple. Um, and they um, created this deck together in the 1970s and um, self-produced it. And then a son of theirs um, has reissued it uh, with their permission. Or a son, a son of one of the gentlemen um, has, has reissued this. And so you can get this now. Um, if you just look up uh, Sheridan Douglas Tarot, I can actually put the link in the show notes after this um, video is finished. And um, that's where I got my copy. So this is not a vintage 1970s copy. It's a modern one. Um, and it has this very cartoony art style. You can see some of the images here um, on the book. And so uh, it appealed to me initially because of this, you know, the bright colors and the 1970s kind of kitsch of it. Um, and I'll get some cards out. It does come with a sort of a fold-out booklet, so it, it comes with a, uh, a bit of instruction for you, um, but the deck uh, also you can get this tarot book uh, with it, the Tarot Origins, Meanings, and Uses of the Cards by Alfred Douglas, and that's the book I want to review for you. But you can see here that, you know, there's some cards that are very RWS and there's some that are kind of Marseille inspired, uh, like this one, and this is RWS, and then you get all kinds of things. This is more Thoth almost. Here's the two of batons. That's its own thing. Uh, the three of batons is a dolphin and a ship. So it's, it's really all over the place image wise, and I appreciate that about it. Um, but it's also very minimalist and simplistic. And something I've learned as I've, you know, been working through um, my collection and kind of developing it over time is that I don't always get a lot of strong uh, feelings or information from decks with super simplified imagery. So that's another reason I'm, I'm willing to trade this um, is that while I, I do like it and I appreciate it, um, you know, the imagery is just, it's its very garish and it's very um, sort of simplified. So uh, there's certain ideas here that I really like, like the Six of Cups is a big fountain. There's, there's ideas that I can appreciate and enjoy, but in terms of an everyday reader, again, it's sort of a mixed bag for me. But before I let it go, I, I told... Um, the person I traded with. So a, a shout out to Olive Slings Cards. That's her online name. Her her first name is Wendy. Um, and she has a great blog. And I'm going to link to an, a blog entry. Um, she did a reply to the Lisa Papez 21 Tarot questions that I did in uh, my last month's wrap up uh, with Laura. And she decided to do um, just a written version of that uh, tag. And her, her blog entry is really funny. So highly recommend Olive Slings cards. She's also on Instagram under that moniker. And she posts the most pithy and insightful readings. I really enjoy um, her reading style. And she reads with all kinds of different decks. Lots of historic stuff and also modern wacky decks, all kinds of things. So I'm really glad that we could work out this trade. And thank you. So let's talk about this book. And I'll go back up here. Um, I'm curious if any of you have the Sheridan Douglas as well. This book I have not exactly read cover to cover, I'll admit, but what I did was I skipped around and I read kind of the, the parts of the book that were important to me to get a grasp on what Alfred Douglas was talking about. The chapters are The Origin of the Tarot Cards, Symbolism of the Tarot, and he talks about medieval renaissance, Gnostic influences, um, the game of triumphs, so the game that you would play with tarot, and then talks about some other cultural influences, including the Grail Hallows, it talks about esoteric tarot, so I read that section because I'm always curious what people say about the esotericists and their interpretations of things. Then he goes through the court cards, and then he goes through the 1 through 10. And then how to consult the tarot includes a number of spreads and how to conduct readings. So this is a really comprehensive book. I very much appreciated it. And best of all, it has copious 
footnotes. It has pictures of other historic decks when he's talking about um, examples of historic tarot, um, as well as a bibliography. So this is not just, you know, a person's opinions or ideas about tarot, which, you know, sometimes those can be interesting and useful to read, but this is really well researched. And the other thing that I appreciate is that he, he leaves the door open for things we don't know. Um, for example, in talking about the origin of the tarot cards, you know, he acknowledges all of these different cultural influences that were blending and melding through um, trade and religious uh, experimentation and different sects of different religions breaking off and the Gnostics coming in um, sort of pre and during Christianity and all of this and coming up with all these different ideas and how that was being blended and morphed as it moved through Europe and, you know, brought in information from uh, African countries and the Middle East and did all of that. And he basically says, you know, we can't, we can't pinpoint tarot's origin. It's not Egyptian. We know that because there's no archaeological evidence that it ever was Egyptian. So that was made up by the esotericists. But in terms of its exact origin, you know, it's somewhere in northern Italy sometime in the 1400s. Um, but we don't have any specific evidence to say, okay, here's the exact first tarot deck. We have some early ones. We know some of the imagery. We know we can compare imagery of the time with art and sculpture and political thought and all of that and kind of draw some, you know, parallels but we don't have a definitive answer. And I think a lot of people make a mistake of trying to pin that stuff down rather than just saying, we don't really know. And the, and he does that repeatedly on different topics throughout the book, and I really, um, I really appreciate that. So um, the other thing that I really like about this book is it's kind of a concise primer, if you will, on the Golden Dawn system of tarot. And he doesn't say that, like, this is the end-all be-all, or you have to be an esotericist in order to read the tarot, but he does give you great summations of what were the esotericists actually getting at. And I've been trying to read A.E. Wait. I've been trying to read other people's commentaries on it, and it's, it, it's like, kept going over my head, and I kept getting lost in, like, the the weird lingo that they developed and all of this and the, all the stuff about uh, Kabbalistic um, associations and all of that. And he breaks it down very clearly and very succinctly and also talks about how the Golden Dawn um, essentially culturally appropriated Kabbalah and made it into their own spiritual uh, magical pursuits that they were, they were developing. And... I just found that so refreshing and so clear. And so if you are interested in uh, especially Kabbalistic tarot or um, those kinds of associations, um, if you've been curious about it or if you've been trying to follow it and stumbling along like I have, I really highly recommend getting a copy of this book. Unfortunately, it's only in print through the Sheridan Douglas families, and so you do have to order it through them on their website. I wish it was an ebook. Um, I would love to have a copy of that. But... Uh, Anyway, so you get all these things, um, like Eliphas Levy's attribution of the tarot trumps to the Hebrew alphabet. You know, he's somebody I've read a lot about, and here's your list. Um, here's the Kabbalistic Tree of Life, really big with all of the different pathways and associations. And then he breaks down how the, how the Golden Dawn uh, did their correspondences with astrology and Kabbalistic thought, and then also how the Golden Dawn associated, what do I want to say, their titles for the miners um, with the Kabbalistic system. So one thing I didn't know uh, before was how that was developed, and it's based on the um, four-syllable uh, divine name, yad heh vah um, and then combining that with a Pythagorean numerology to come up with um, the different uh, titles like dominion, established strength, perfected work, strife, all that stuff. And this is also what Crowley based his on, although he made some other changes. So anyway, it's just been a great like root um, text for all of this esoteric stuff that I've been pulling from different sources and trying to understand but really struggling with. And so I appreciate this, this book for that reason. Um, 
it's funny, uh, earlier this week, I was having a discussion with a friend and she was asking me, you know, okay, age old question, what's the best tarot book to get started if you're new to tarot? And I don't know that this would be my pick for everybody, but for the person who likes a lot of factual information, the person who likes a lot of historical information behind whatever it is that they're interested in, um, this could actually be a really good starter book, whether or not the accompanying cards are your cup of tea art-wise or not. Um, just for the information, I think this is great. It's easier to understand than Robert Place, um, for me, who's who's a great writer on tarot and does explain and go into all of these historical um, sources and things. But uh, this one, I think, was even better and even easier to follow. That's that. And um, he does include a, quite a few like I said, some spreads and some exercises and some other stuff in the back. Um, the other thing is he acknowledges that, oh, and there's even a thing on how to play Piedmontese style, the game of Taroki. That's really cool. I hadn't even seen that before. Any four card sequence equals five points. Any seven card sequence equals 10 points. So see, you, you, you get so much for your, for your money with this book. Um, it's really cool. I interrupted myself and I don't know what I was gonna say. Oh, just the other thing is that he, he talks about meditation in tarot. He talks about Jungian uh, theory and with tarot. And he doesn't ever say, like, this is the way that you have to do tarot. This is the way you must practice this. This is the way you must do this. He's just giving you examples of how different people have done it through the ages. Um, and he also plainly acknowledges the spurious uh, and dubious origins of the Golden Dawn itself. Um, but at the same time, he says, you know, even though this had very dubious origins and a lot of this was made up it kind of works the system works and so you can you can take it and you can use that golden dawn system if it's appealing because it has its own internal logic but it's not it's not the like the true tarot that you must follow um so yeah lots of high praise for this uh the tarot the origins meaning and uses of the cards by alfred douglas and if you like history like i do definitely grab a copy